but I am technically, it's before midnight. It's like a minute and a half, maybe a little less. Cueing the camera. Greetings, unsettled souls. You know there's literally less than a minute until the month is over, but I managed to go live on all platforms. Technically, while it was still July, it's true, I did. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, uh, Delta Cap of the Month Awards show here. I've been meaning to get to it sooner, but uh, I don't know, how's your summer going? How's everybody's summer going while they trickle in? Let me ask that, because uh, things still here even after the number of years of which we've been running solo here, just not the same, friends. The show and all things regarding it, just not the same. But what is the same is the fact that I bring you the largest, most consistent collection of dummies that you have ever seen. <clears throat> and uh, I want to mention uh, the ultimate, this probably should have won. And we're going to jump right into it, as you can see. This this probably should have won. Obama. As it just clicks midnight. I still made it. Obama. <clears throat> Obama, Obama, Obama. Is speaking at the funeral of Representative John Lewis. And go to former President Barack Obama University. Take two. Former President Barack Obama eulogy at Rep. John Lewis funeral. It's a C-SPAN video. In this video, he, I mean, he's done some dumb things. I mean, it, it can be proved that he, he's done some ridiculously boneless, boneheaded things for this country, to this country. But this takes the cake. I'm looking at this funeral, and there's about, oh, I don't know both with and without mask, I would say probably close to 100 people, probably more than that, crammed into a church, and Obama's about to speak. What does he say? Well, what he says lands him as the opening of the Delft Camp of the Month show. How's that? This idiot says that we are going to have mail-in voting <clears throat> because of the fear of getting sick from COVID-19 gathering in groups. But there is no situation where the group of people at the voting booth would be as numerous, particularly without a mask on, as numerous and as clustered together as these people are at the funeral. But meanwhile, you've got Obama here saying that we need to vote by mail for fear that we do not infect each other. Now, the top camera, I can move here so that you guys can at least get a look at that. Look at that. Okay, so this idiot says that we need to mail in our votes. We cannot go to the voting precinct because we may get sick if we congregate into large groups without a mask, close together. Which is everything that his bonehead just did at his speech. Friends, when I'm talking about the dumbest cap of the month, I absolutely mean the dumbest people in the world. I've got more stories to get to before I jump off. I haven't had them going on as long as I have in the past because the algorithms and the abject cheating that goes on in the social media world when you present facts such as I do tends to make it very difficult for things to be shared or things to be heard unless they are shared. So are you hearing if if you're hearing it say hey I'm hearing it. What what do you think of the show when are you hitting share? Are you hitting share? Make sure you do because otherwise it doesn't do me much good to bring these sort of facts to everyone if they're just going to sit on the web. So make sure, you know, you're doing your part to spread this information. Uh, information such as the idiot George Soros. Now, you would think during a pandemic, a man who 
escape Nazi Germany. Granted, he referred to Nazi Germany as something, something to the effect of wonderful years or something. And I know he was young when he was taken, taken, but that doesn't mean that you would look back on it fondly, which sort of is what he had said. But in any event, George Soros has now gone from being ungrateful to God for getting out of Nazi Germany and becoming rich enough to destroy England at least once. Uh, look up Soros Silver if you doubt me. Um, now he thinks he's God. This is from uh, uh, Disciple.com. George Soros says, I am God. It doesn't have to follow the rules. People wonder why so many calamities are hitting the world now because this kind of evil is running it, friends. Listen to this. It happened during a pandemic, no less. Most people are asking God for help, right? I'll get to that in a minute. When asked by Britain's independent newspaper to elaborate on that passage, what I just read, Soros said, it is a sort of disease when you consider yourself some kind of God, the creator of everything. But I feel comfortable about it now since I began to live it out. In other words, he's one of these people that believe, you know, God is in us all. And you, you hear this misquoted all the time, which is why it's on the Dunce Cap of the Month show. People will say, the kingdom of God is within you. That's what Jesus said. No, what Jesus said was the kingdom of God is in your midst. The translation, the kingdom of God is within you, is a word-for-word -word translation from what some people have gathered the root language to be. Other people have said it is within, in, among you. That that's what that meant. Within you meant within your people, within your circle. It, it was the way they spoke then in their language, which would have been Greek or Aramaic. That's the way they spoke within their language, in Hebrew, of course. It, it, it's like saying it rains cats and dogs. It doesn't mean what the words say. And the way you can tell this is that Christ said it to the Pharisees. And he would certainly have not said that the kingdom of God was within the Pharisees. So, but obviously Soros is one of these idiots who doesn't know that kind of history because, of course, he's on the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. Um, and this is from C-SPAN as well. Talk about tempting God during an outbreak. Remember I said a moment ago that people were praying for a positive outcome during the time of the pandemic. The Bible says that such things would be helpful. It says that if you turn from your wicked ways... You would be helped by God. There have been people that have said, well, where, where is God? Does God answer these prayers? Are they just offered up like smoke to go into the great ether of nothing? Or are they, are they substantive? Do they have a result? And considering that COVID-19 is not killing the number of people projected, and it's not at the stage, even at 1%, would have been a massive calling of the population. Since that didn't happen, many people have correctly so. That's why you're listening to the correct views. I'll tell you what's correct, and you can trust me, because I research before I talk. You can see answered prayer. And rather than say, thank you, God, I'm grateful to you, God, I'm... I'm I'm happy that this isn't as bad as it was. Listen what this idiot says. This is Governor Cuomo. The number is down because the number is because we brought the number down. God did not do that. Fate did not do that. Destiny did not do that. A lot of pain and suffering did that. Do today. The number is down. Because we brought the number down. God did not do that. Fate did not do that. Destiny did not do that. A lot of pain and suffering did that. Okay, so there was no pain and suffering during the Spanish flu to bring the numbers down. No. Because you just heard Cuomo say that God didn't do it. Pain and suffering did it. So because you work really hard, the number came down. What, during other pandemics, people have worked really hard. The number didn't come down. So when people do see answered prayers, they say stupid, boneheaded things like that, which absolutely 
negates the entire premise of what they ask proof for. Prove that your God exists. Okay, so they're pretty well laid out there, I would argue. And what happens? Cuomo says, first of all, George Soros says that he is God. And now Cuomo is deliberately mocking God, even though it is believed by many that God answered the prayers. And the fact that COVID is not as bad as it was. Guys, i got two more stories to get to before I get to the big winner here. I do want to remind you it's listener-supported. You can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. All the money you give to me goes towards a better, and as I said earlier, more frequent show. Friends, this is from the Seattle Times. You might want to find its source somewhere else because they've got this annoying thing that makes you shut your ad blocker off, so don't go. But uh, how many of you noticed that in the age of COVID, there's not as much crowd noise. There's not as much rah, rah, rah at that. Because, you know, the crowd's not there. Whatever, whatever. Hello, T Heat. Nice to see you. Yes, I'm doing uh, well. Uh, who? But Craig the Shill, I, I'll tell you what. Craig the Shill is going to want to hear the end of this, uh, T Heat. So don't, don't go away. I promise you. He's going to want to hear who wins. It ties into that. But, um... Again, I'm talking to, on YouTube. Uh, you can find the youtube.com slash the correct views or uh, the media speaks where T Heat is at. There's a lot less noise going on in the stadiums because there's nobody in it. I listened to an Indians game today. Yes, the Indians, the Cleveland I N D I A N S, who do not need to change their name, Cleveland Indians, those Indians. I was listening to the game today and. Crowd noise or whatever. It's, they're playing the game without people in it during an outbreak. That's fine. In the EU and in Europe, they're pumping in fake crowd noise, cheering, booing, hissing, whistling. And it's all fake so that people listening to it can hear people cheering like they would if the games were really going on in front of a crowd. In other words, it's not just that we have to live with the, the virus for the time being, as we're being told, until this remarkable vaccine comes, and I'm sure is going to be perfectly safe, of course. But they're trying to acclimate everyone. Oh, everything's normal. Listen how normal. Hear the crowd. The crowd at one point, according to NPR, was sampled from a video game. Uh, the Seattle article here says that fan groups protest the fake noise. As they should. It's absolutely mindless. They have people cheering when there's no crowd there. Now, there, there is one company, and I forget their name, a shame upon me, where you can pick... You boo, your hiss, your chant, and you can all do it at the same time. And whoever has the most, I guess, feedback in this app, whatever the most common suggestion is, a cheering, then they, you know, the cheering comes on. If most people are booing, then the booing goes on, which I guess happens more in England. Booing and whistling happen more in England, uh, again, according to NPR. So they kind of are simulating noise that they would make if they were there. Does that sound dumb? Not as dumb as our winner, which would be here. No, where's my music? Where's my dumb D music? I hear it. I hear it in the distance. Yeah, I messed up the uh, vocal syncopation. You'll have that. Uh, friends, when I'm talking about dumb, I'm talking about the kind of dumb that asks you this question. This is what T. Heat was referring to with our shill. Would you call cancer clean? Would you, would you call a better way to word that? Would you cause? Would you name? Would you call something that causes cancer clean? Or would you call it malignant? Bone cancer stomach cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, cancer. How about brittle bones? How about heart issues? How about a damaged immune system that picks up every illness that comes down the pipeline? Would you call anything that led to all of that 
clean. Because do you know who does? The winner of the dunce cap award, Ohio Governor Mark DeWine. Now, it's bad enough that this idiot, I'm going to digress here for a moment, this idiot in Ohio has, as of today, a bar is closing at 10 p.m., which was uh, two hours and 13 minutes ago, in order to keep the number of people clustered together to a minimum. If he didn't win it for what he's about to win it for, and I'll get to it, he'd have won it for that. Because let, let's, let's think about this. If you've got 500 people that plan on going out between the hours of 9 and 2 a.m., that's somewhat manageable. But if you make it from 9 to 10, 8 to 10-ish, now they feel like when they get off work at they shower, they have to go at the same time. So the crowds at these places are going to be bigger during, they're going to be at maximum capacity, regardless of what that might be, during the time prior to 10 o'clock. If you were looking to spread the people out over a longer period of time, then what you would have done is told the places, the establishments that sold alcohol to stay open longer, to like 4 or 5 in the morning maybe. That way, people could go out at 2 a.m., maybe 3.30 in the morning, and still go out and have some kind of nightlife and not feel like they have to make it in there before 10 o'clock, have the drinks off the table by 11. What the governor just did was make it so that more people were going to be in the restaurant at the same time than would have been if he hadn't done it. That, as dumb as it is, is not the only thing. So much illness, no way to keep track of the damages. Well, listen to this, T Heat. Listen to this. Governor DeWine still supports nuclear bailout law despite the bribery scandal. This that's from uh, WKDKA2 CBS Pittsburgh. Vox. Ohio just passed the worst energy bill of the 21st century. Um, and I'm not a big fan of Vox, but listen to this. The governor said that. Because nuclear power is a clean alternative and a vital cog in the wheel, so to speak, towards hitting the global warming ridiculous boneheadedness uh, standards that we're supposed to meet, that it's imperative that we keep nuclear open. Now, we've gone over on this show countless times the proof, not, not my opinion, the proof that man is not, will not, has not, cannot, and never will warm the planet. Unless maybe, you know, a nuclear war, he might cool the planet. He's not changing the temperature of the planet by driving his car, by having the heat on, none of it. None of it! Not by me talking into the camera using electricity. It's not warming the planet. The planet's temperature is decided by the sun. However... Yes, he mentions the Green New Deal includes 200 small modular reactors. Not just that, but even when these reactors, of course, and I'm sure T-Heat knows this, even when they run the way that they are supposed to, the routine releases lead to what Helen, Dr. Helen Caldercott has called a routine cancer. This is, this is when they're running well, not, not when they're malfunctioning, not when there's a meltdown, melt out, or melt through. No, when they are running as they are supposed to be running, routine releases, release tritium, americum, strontium-9, which is a direct path to bone cancer. All of that is released into the atmosphere when nuclear power plants are running properly. Meanwhile, DeWine wants to keep nuclear power plants open because they are a clean alternative to coal, which even though coal is probably giving us lung cancer, let's face it, it's not healthy, it is not warming the planet. There is no reason to meet these milestones for the climate change, which man is not causing. And nuclear would not be a good alternative. Anyhow, it's not better to get cancer than it is to warm the planet. It's not. It's better to warm the planet than it is to get cancer. It's just it's common sense, people. And do you remember, there's millions of dollars tied up in this. The, uh, the, and why do, we have to, why do we have to bail out nuclear power plants? 
because nuclear power plants cannot make money and they are uninsurable. The planet is able to adjust to slow changes. Yes, Patricia McGurn is true on that as well. Um, what you have here is an industry that is so expensive that you cannot insure it. No, no insurance company would insure a nuclear power plant. So what they're doing is they give subsidies, and these subsidies are basically your tax dollars, my tax dollars, uh, either not generated or given to the nuclear power company to come in, one or the other. Either they're not charged what they're supposed to be charged in taxes, or they're being outright given money by the taxpayer because they, they lose money. They're uninsurable. Because when they melt down, the trillions of dollars are easily done in damages. And it's, it's uninsurable. The health, the health problems, they bury them, and people still find out through one way or the other what caused it. Uninsurable. So we need a bailout. But do you remember when nuclear power was first sold to everyone? After World War II, it was the peaceful atom. And we were told, we were promised, there was a promise made to the people that it would be energy too cheap to meter. If energy is too cheap to meter, then pray tell, why are we having this discussion with millions of dollars being in play to be scammed by the government? So here's what I've got, <clears throat> the Ohio government. Here is what I've got. He's going to be mailed this and the award. I'll be showing you guys Facebook. I'm about to uh, share it on the uh, comment line right after this video and uh, on my YouTube channel if you're on the correct views go to Facebook Samuel DeGange and you will find it all right <clears throat> this is the hat he's getting set <clears throat> the dunce cap of course it says dunce all right <clears throat> My first drawing, wasn't nuclear energy supposed to be too cheap to meter? How did a householder get involved in bundles of money? Not a bad question. There's a man standing in front of a smokestack. I like this one. The smokestack, as you can see, <clears throat> has words in it. I'm going to read you what those words are. Brittle bones. Cancer birth defects, heart issues. The man at the bottom of the stack is saying, that looks clean to DeWine. But no, there's more. I've also got, uh, as you guys know, I always do the nuclear, no uh, nuclear, making sure Facebook can see this as well. Yes, okay. Now the award which he is going to be sent says, and again, I'm mailing this to the uh, DeWine. Um, I want to see if I can... Uh, quickly put this in the comment line for those on Facebook. No, I'm going to have to do it afterwards, it looks like. It says, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Science has proven to anyone willing to actually learn that man has no sizable merit when it comes to the warming of the planet. Science has also proven beyond all doubt that nuclear power and the routine releases which happen even when the stations are running properly cause cancer and other illnesses. Since Governor DeWine called nuke plants safe and a need to combat global warming, Governor DeWine wins the dunce cap of the month award. It's going to be mailed to him. Uh, friends, guess what? Mailing these hats out can be kind of expensive. So if you'd like to help me do that, I really would appreciate it. Uh, the correct views on Hotmail.com through PayPal. T Heat wrote, they don't include internal exposure, only external. Also, these compounds are treated as macronutrients in the body like potassium and calcium. What he means by that is, and he's right, <clears throat> if you don't have your calcium high, then your body will pick up uh, a lot of these elements like strontium and uh, cesium, they will uptake them into the body and sort of fill in where the nutrients should be because the body can't tell them apart. He also wrote Atomic City. It's a beautiful American dream. Everybody needs an Atomic City. And that's what they said. 
And then we found out we built time bombs. Friends, uh, thank you for listening. Good night. God bless. Please do hit share. And uh, hey, thanks for tuning in. If you're enjoying this summer with somebody that you love, make sure you hold them extra close. You've got a month of summer.